A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as the netherworld and as high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin will conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. Verbum Domini. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. The Lord of the earth and his fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or, may, or who may stand in his holy place? Those hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior, such as the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O key of David, opening the gates of God's eternal kingdom, come and free the prisoners of darkness. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dominus Rubiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Lucum. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall name him Jesus. He will be great, will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. In his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Verbum Domini. All right, well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, um, if you see the description for today's mass video, the homily title is Obedience is Awesome. Obedience is Awesome. And... Uh, it is. Now, let, let's, let's, well, first let's start with the Hail Mary, reflecting on today's gospel. Reflecting on the reality that this prayer, the Hail Mary, is biblically correct, theologically correct, and that this prayer is so beautiful because it reminds us of Mary's awesome obedience. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the womb of thy son Jesus, right? How beautiful those words are. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God. And she is. Pray for us sinners. In other words, intercede for us. Now and at the hour of our death. Amen. This beautiful, beautiful prayer that we really take for granted because we just pray it as part of the rosary every day. But to meditate on uh, each strophe in the prayer is so, so powerful, right? Hail Mary, full of grace. Mary's obedience is awesome. When, when, with all the amazing things the angel tells Mary, when does the angel depart from Mary? When she pledges her obedience. Pledges her obedience. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. In other words, just do with me as you will. Hey, that's it. There's nothing more that needs to be said when she pledges her obedience. The angel leaves. And then she departs in haste, in haste, to serve Elizabeth, right? It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. The book of the prophet Isaiah, you know, I mean, this is an amazing reading too, and I, we heard it on Sunday, I believe. Now, the Lord says to Ahaz, the Lord, now maybe it was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, maybe uh, the prophet Isaiah said, look at the Lord told me to tell you, but that's not the way Isaiah wrote it. Isaiah wrote it saying, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Now imagine that. The Lord is telling Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Ask for a sign from me your God. Right? Let it be as deep as the netherworld or high as the sky. Now think about that. If the Lord appeared to us and said that to us, I'm beginning to see some, some, some different insights here. Because if the Lord came to me and said, look, it asked for a sign, a sign, a sign, not a gift, not something you want or need, a sign. Make it as deep as the netherworld or as high as the sky. And Ahaz, probably in fear, says, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord, right? Really what he's saying is, look it, I'm sorry, I don't want to ask for the wrong thing. I, I, I don't want to ask for the wrong thing. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Now, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But then Isaiah says, you know, is it enough? Is it, is it not enough for you to weary men, but you also weary God? So what, what are we hearing here? God wants us to ask him for signs. Those signs may be something in our lives, the intentions in every single Mass, the intentions in our daily offering. But he wants it to be as high as the sky and as deep as the netherworld. Be bold. Ask him. It's an not when we ask for things that are beyond us. It's an acknowledgement of him being God and that he can deliver these things to us. He can deliver miracles to us. And how should we know that? Because at every single Mass, he changes bread and wine into his body and blood. Every single Mass, he comes and he's physically present. Emmanuel, right? That's what we hear. God is with us. And so he wants us to ask, ask for great things. But we need to be like Solomon. Oh, I want all the riches in the world, Lord. Well, I'll tell you what, we have seen time and time again that people getting all the riches in the world don't make them more happy. As a matter of fact, very often it makes them more miserable. Brings a lot of pain and suffering into their lives. 
Oh, Lord, I want to be powerful. I want to be influential. No, you don't. No, you don't. We see what that happens to causes people. All kinds of headaches and, and heartaches. Solomon, I want to be wise. I want to be wise. And, and, and Solomon's asking to be wise. What does Jesus say about that? Those who hear the word of God and act on it are wise. Lord, I want to hear your word clearly, and I want to act on it. Now, is that a powerful thing to ask of God? Absolutely. Lord, give me your will clearly in my life. Be decisive with me. Rip open the veil and let me see what your will is. Let me hear your will so I can act on it. And give me the strength to act on it. I say that every single day, right? In prayers when people say, Father, can you pray with me? And I say, oh, let's start off with a prayer. Lord, show us your will and give us the strength, right, to act on it. Lord, may you show us your clear will. Give it to us clearly and give us the strength to act on it. This is true wisdom, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a sign that is as deep as the netherworld and, and as high as it. Because seeing our Lord's will clearly every day is a great gift. And then having the strength to act on it is a great gift. And I will tell you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that's exactly what the Eucharist does for us each and every single day. It gives us the clarity to see God's will and then the strength to go out into the world and do his will. That's why the goal of every single Catholic should be that at some point in their life, for the rest of their life, they are daily communicants. They receive Jesus into them every single day. And again, the whole idea of, of asking for these powerful things, but attaching it to obedience. Because Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, this cup could pass for me, but your will be done, not mine. Lord, remove this trial and tribulation from me, but your will be done, not mine. Lord, grant me this gift, but your will be done, not mine. This is what I want, Lord, but your will be done, not mine. Because I am your servant, Lord. Let it be done unto me according to thy word. This is powerful. This is awesome. So what a great reflect. I want to thank you, Lord, for these words, because I had no expectation of this beforehand. So what a great reflection for us, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we approach in anticipation the coming of Emmanuel. God is with us. So awesome. Let us ask our God who is with us to grant us the clarity of his will and the strength then to do his will. Let us now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs.